How's it going guys? Balder here and I am in the A10 in DCS World. So I wanted to do a quick video about flight controls. And not just about flight controls, but more of the advanced features that flight controls have. Let's say that you are in an A10 or in any plane for that matter, though honestly the A10 is probably the most durable. Except for maybe the SU-25. You know, I kind of digress in that regard, but needless to say, when it comes down to it, let's say you're hit by a missile and you want to maneuver back to your base instead of ejecting and getting captured by the enemy or some something like that. Well, the thing is, is that if you try to use basic controls, especially when you don't have them, you're not going to succeed at reaching your... Uh, waypoint or wherever you need to go. Instead, what you're what's going to happen is that you're going to crash into the ground and well, bad things will happen. So, let's say that your plane is heavily crippled and some control surfaces aren't working. How exactly do um pilots flight simula flight simmers uh, more so pilots. I don't mean to disrespect them, but let's let's say how do people get to um, the runway when they don't have these said control surfaces? Such as, well, I just lost my elevators. How do I um, move up and down? Things like that. Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. The control surfaces that you have serve more than one fun uh, more than one function. The ailerons, for example. Obviously, they're for banking, and uh, when you bank to the left, you will turn to the left. When you bank to the right, you turn to the right. But that's not the only thing that the ailerons do. For example, I'm going to turn off the autopilot, and I'm going to uh, bank it to the right. Now, one thing you'll notice is that if you take a look at the vertical speed indicator, you'll notice that I'm losing altitude. And the reason I'm losing altitude is because most of the lift is going into making this plane turn instead of making it uh, making the altitude sustained. So what you'd normally do is that you'd pull up to compensate for that. And that's not the only thing that the ailerons can do. Another thing you can do with the ailerons is um, you can manipulate how fast you're heading towards an object while not changing your speed whatsoever. It's called S-turning, and it's pretty simple. Let's say that you don't have enough, uh, you have way too much altitude and you're trying to make uh, the runway. But you, well, what you can do is that you can S-turn so that you can lose altitude while in the meantime maintain your speed. And that's very important when it comes to landing. So basic things like that. So the aileron has uh, more than just one function, obviously. And that's always something to take into consideration, especially if you're in an emergency situation and you need to make it to a runway. Now another thing uh, that's actually probably a lot more obvious that many people um, that many people know but some people don't is the whole uh, thing with the pitch, the elevators. Obviously the elevators control up and down so on and so forth but another thing that people probably um, well a lot of people actually know but a lot of people don't know at the same time is that um, if you control the pitch you also control the airspeed. See if you pitch up, gravity's working against you, and your airspeed drops. And it's the same way if you were to push the plane down. Now gravity is working for you, and it's pretty much a roller coaster effect. Go down, you gain speed. Go up, you lose speed. Pretty basic, right? The same thing. Can actually be applied in reverse when it comes to uh, 
a thrust. I'm going to put this into autopilot just so uh, that I can get things nice and uh, set up. Don't know if it'll affect my trim. All right. I'm going to uh, change my trim so that it is. Um, so that my rate of climb is about zero. Close enough, right? All right, so the engines. Obviously, they control the speed, but another thing that they control is the uh, climb. So let's say that I give it full throttle. This is probably not the best. Ah, there we go. All right. About to say, this probably wasn't the best example, but uh, I was actually going pretty fast as is. So. As the throttle goes up, the uh, rate of climb goes up as well. Now, if I pro pull it back, then what will happen is that you will not only will not only uh, send, but you will also uh, pitch down as well. And it's the same thing for. I'm about to head towards the edge of a map. It's the same thing for uh, pit, well, pitching up as well. Gain enough airspeed, you'll eventually start to nose up. Which is good, because let's say my elevator's not working, and I notice that I'm heading towards that village at kind of an alarming rate. Well, if I don't have elevators, then the best way for me to change my altitude is to throttle up and to um, and to pick the nose up. Now the nose is going up. The only thing that I should mention is that you don't want the nose to climb up way too high. Right now that's not too big of, an, of a deal. But you'll notice that even though I am at full throttle, if you can see it, uh, maybe it's better if you see it through here, my airspeed is dropping. That's because the climb that's because the engines are not compensating for the gravity, to uh, put it more simply. But anyway, I'm going to turn back because I'm about to fall off the edge of a world. I don't want to pull a Dio, and instead, I'd like to stay on the map. Just because. I mean, maybe it's an allegory and they're saying that uh, Russia north of the Caucasus is just boring, but eh, I'm not too sure. Bad joke is bad joke. So, what else is there? Oh yes, the rudder. If you've ever played Ace Combat, you'll notice that the rudder controls the yaw. The left and the right. That's not the only thing I can control, though. See, here's the uh, flight stick. Notice that um, it's very obvious when I'm banking. But I am not going to move the uh, flight stick at all. What I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to uh, move the rudders. Watch what happens. I'm going to uh, deflect fully to the right. That was a little bit fast, but I think that kind of makes the point. Yeah, as you can see, I am not moving the stick at all. Instead, I am moving the rudders. Now, why is that important? Oh, by the way, notice that I also uh, dropped the nose as well. But the reason why that's important is because, let's say, you don't have ailerons. Sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes uh, you have half a wing. That's what you're flying on. Well, guess what? you can use the rudders to uh, bank. And uh, the reason for that, I heard, is because when you yaw one angle or another, or yaw to, from one side to another, and what's going to happen is that the um, air is going to be blocked by the fuselage, which will then in turn reduce the lift of that one wing. I'm not sure if that's how exactly it works. Um, someone who uh, knows aerodynamics would probably tell me that, but that's from what I heard. So that's what rudders can do as well. They can not only control the yaw, but they can also control 
It can also control the um, roll as well. To quite a good extent in this plane, apparently. But anyway, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you something else. And this is going to... Uh, this is what we call a slip. Now, this is a combination of both reducing the throttle, I'm going to reduce it to idle, and then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bank to the left, and then I'm going to uh, rudder to the right. Now, what that will do is that that will drastically um, reduce the uh, not only the speed, but the altitude as well. But the thing is, though, is that you always want to have that going down. Or nose down, I should say. And you should always maintain a good speed with that. Because what could happen is, let's say that I do this. But the difference is that I... Alright, there we go. Cross control here. Let's say that I do it with nose up. Oh, uh, what's going to happen is that... Notice that I'm full throttle, by the way. I will get into a stall. And uh, if you get into a cross-control stall in most airplanes, then you will fucking plummet. Apparently that's not the case with the A-10, but actually I'm going to try that uh, once more. Right, really cross-controlling. Ah, uh, there we go. We lost about just about all our speed. So, cross control stalls you definitely want to avoid. I'm going to fly towards the Caucasus, actually, just because I don't go off the map. And then I'm going to show you uh, one more thing. Alright, so... Autopilot is going to go back on just so that we can uh, get level again. Let's talk about the flaps. When the flaps are engaged, Generally, what's going to happen are a few things. Alright, so... Hopefully this will explain it quite a bit. What will happen with uh, flaps, that flaps not only uh, increase lift, but they also increase drag, so it's very difficult for someone to gain speed while the flaps are there. Now, let's say that you have the landing gear extended, and what that's going to do is that that's really going to increase drag. as well. So in this setup, your plane is not very maneuverable in the slightest, without a doubt. It also gets to the point where you're not going to have a lot of lift, but you're going to have a lot of lift uh, proportionate to the speed that you have. But the big thing about flaps is that they increase drag. So I'm going to retract those, I'm going to retract the landing gear, and then I'm going to bring up one more thing that's pretty uh, crucial. The speed brakes. Speed brakes are going to serve two purposes. One, they're going to uh, lower the speed of your plane, and secondly, they're going to reduce lift. And by, doing, by reducing lift, I mean they're going to be reducing a lot of lift. 
Now, in some planes, they have uh, what we call spoilerons, where uh, the spoilers will actually act as ailerons if they need to uh, turn sharply. And let's say that you'll, you could actually see this when you're traveling on a passenger jet. See, what would happen is that once you reach that point, or let's say that you're in a very turbulent uh, piece of air, the plane is on autopilot, but it hits a very rough bump. If you're looking out the window out the, at the wing, you'll see the spoilers deploy very, very slightly. And that's because the autopilot needs to compensate a little bit more just to uh, get the plane straight and level. Um, if the pilot also turns sharply, then the spoilerons could also be activated. But usually that's used for very uh, sharp, um, sharp necessities for banking, I guess is the best way to put it. So that's generally what you have. I'm sure I glossed over quite a few different things, but there are a lot of things that you can do in the combination of your controls. Make sure that you make it to your airbase. So with that said, you guys should uh, experiment with that, see how that works with you, and in doing so, you can better handle this, um, this plane, or any plane for that matter. <clears throat> so, um, for example, let's say that I want to fly uh, very close towards this village. Alright, so this is what I am going to do. I am going to reduce my throttle, all the way for that matter. I am going to slightly barrel roll, and that was not too good of an idea, so I'm going to increase the uh, throttle a little bit. But now I'm going to reduce the throttle. I am going to slowly pull back on the stick. Pull up, pull up. Shut up, bitch and Betty. Pull up, pull up. I'm gonna use the airlines to my best advantage. Altitude, altitude. And now my throttle is still out, and I'm maintaining up, the altitude with my pitch. And the roll, and so on. Add a little bit of rudder for this one. Increase the throttle. And I need to increase the throttle and increase the pitch pull in order for me up. to avoid that said mountain. Pull thing up, is, though, is up. that this is not a fighter jet, this is an attack jet. But the control surfaces always apply the same way. Let's say that I want to corner this mountain, I need to uh, have full throttle. I need to be mindful of my angle of attack. And of course I need to avoid it in the case that I can't really uh, fit the curvature of that said little mountain. So, either way, it takes practice. Pull up, pull up. But the best way to master the aircraft is to know altitude, what altitude. controls you need to work with, and it isn't always as cut and dry, but hopefully this video has helped. But, with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, you altitude, have a nice altitude. day.